What's going on? <laughs> okay, so I have been wanting to do this for so very long. Um, how do I even set this up? Well, let me help. We're in the same room in Alabama, and you're skittering about curiously with your family. Yes. Okay. And I'm just sitting here alone in this room for, with these headphones on, so I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so I've got three kids in the other room, okay? And the way I would say this is parenting. We all make choices, right? Yeah. So you make a decision about what Christmas traditions, for example, you might do with your family. I make decisions about what Christmas traditions I might do with my family. Sure. People in the third chair do the same thing. So one of the things I have told my children, from the moment they could think, I said... Daddy will never lie to you. I will not lie to you. And so there's all kinds of reasons I do this. However, <laughs> however, there is something that's happening in my family, and I have elected to never lie to my children. Therefore, I'm not participating. My three oldest children are doing something with my youngest child. Okay. And I am being very clever about how I participate so that I can always say, I've never lied to you, youngest daughter. However, it's hilarious, and I'm letting it happen. Okay. And so somehow I am about to experience this cold without knowing anything about what's going on from the mouths of the people who are participating. Is that the setup? That's exactly what we're about to do. Can we go back to the lying thing real quick? What lying thing? Lying. Okay, yeah, like not doing it. Okay. Are you allowed to trick them? Yeah, you can trick them. You can mess with them, but like when they go back and they replay it in their brains, like at the end of The Usual Suspects, they're like, wait, you lied. To oh, you, you, no, that wasn't a lie. You let me think that for the sake of the trick. Like, that's okay. That's okay. All right. And also, you can do things to help them become more clever. But like, if there's ever a, daddy, is this true? Then I'll just tell them straight up if it's true or not. That did factor in to what we're about to learn about my family. Game on. So welcome to the room, three oldest children of mine. Hello. Hi. Good to Hi. see you guys. <laughs> Feel like I'm outside looking in at something here. Feeling a little nervous. There's something you don't know about our family, Mr. Matt. That's probably for the best. There can be things so, I don't know. So just for the third chair. So my oldest daughter is here. My, uh, You're 16. I've got my 14-year-old son here and my 10-year-old son. And uh, yeah, how do you want to do this? How, how should we let Mr. Matt know what's been going on? Well, that was a really good tease right there from daughter number one. What don't I know? Um, we actually have an older brother that you don't know about. His name is Harold Wilberforce. Sandlin. Really? Mm -hmm. Where's he been all this time? Because I feel like I know you all real well, and it seems like I would know that. He's been in college. <laughs> what college? New Mexico State University. He goes to New Mexico State. What's the mascot there at New Mexico State? The um, Trojan. Yeah. No, <laughs> no it's not? Uh, we don't know. We haven't been in contact with him. Yeah. Okay. We've lost contact since he... Went to college four years ago. Sure, four years ago. That's strange because of how well I knew you four years ago. T to be clear, how old is your youngest sister? Seven. Seven, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what is, uh, I'm sorry, the name again? Uh, over here, what was the name again? Harold Wilberforce Sandlin. Harold Wilberforce Sandlin. That just rolled right off the tongue as though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. What is he majoring in there at New Mexico? Doctor's degree. Okay. Yeah. So he's going to New Mexico and he's majoring in doctor's degree? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's he's getting a master's and bachelor's degree. So he's been gone for a while. Oh, so he's doing he's doing the whole he's thing. He's doing everything. Cool. Yeah, one of those all at once yeah. packages. That makes sense. Going to be there for a long time. Yeah. What city in New Mexico is that particular university in again? Albuquerque. <laughs> really? Yeah. Some kind of extension or something? It is. At the Albuquerque yeah, yeah. extension? No, it's a smaller, 
smaller version of it. It's but a small same name, you know. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah, go New Mexicans. <laughs> New I mean, we all. Treasures. All right, all right. Let me let me save the room here. So, <laughs> why don't you explain <laughs> how this came about to Mr. Matt? I'll, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, go well, would you like to see a picture of him? <laughs> yeah, of course. So, yeah. Why did I not ask that first? I asked what the mascot of his college was. For, oh my goodness. Well. He's a looker. There's one more. Yeah, and that's very promising for you. Yeah. He reminds me, uh, there was a, a Disney clone actor created in a lab in the late 1980s named Zac Efron. Hmm? He was on a lot of yep. their programs. And he, I mean, just for the third chair, he reminds me a lot of the Disney actor Zac Efron. Yeah, yeah, he's Harold. That's he's Harold. So that's Harold. Well, mm -hmm. and like right down to the haircut, spit an image if I'm to be completely truthful i know your parents really well and actually before i even met you guys i thought if they had a kid i bet it would look almost exactly like zach efron and now i see that again my intuition in terms of what married couples will produce proves to be accurate so that's him that's yeah what was the name again harold wilberforce harold uh why is his middle name wilberforce well just because just like, cause. That's just what we. Th that's what they thought of. That's what my dad thought of. Okay. Yeah. Have that you ever? How, is that how they work? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever asked your dad? No. Is that a family name? Uh, I don't know. We have our dogs are named kind of weird things, so it's the same thing with Harold. Yeah. Right. Naturally. Here's the way this went down. So, we were hanging out one day, and I forget which child it was. Decided. That it would be, was it you? It was me. What did you say? <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> I convinced my little sister. I said, we we have an older brother. His name is Harold. <laughs> and then I kind of let my older sister and my younger brother in on it. And they just went with it. <laughs> and yeah. This was like during a football game too. So all the family was there <laughs> and everyone just played along. <laughs> Even the great uncle Steve, who came up with the name, it was the it, first it was on the thing. Fly. Yeah. To be clear, have have your mom and I ever participated in this? They say they don't lie to their children, but they don't tell her that it isn't real. Does that count morally? They're third party. Because like <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you guys lied to your sister, right? Yeah. That created a whole host of issues for me. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and that does make you uncomfortable. When I do the dry Mountain West man of the North humor, that's just put on a straight face and see it, say an absurd thing that clearly is not the case. <laughs> and the joke is, I trust that you're savvy enough to know that I'm joking, sir. Like one time I was doing that with some people. I joked about how they don't do parents in the West well, from Wyoming, where I'm from. They just sometimes you're raised by wolves. <laughs> you put your right hand on the back of my elbow and said to the gentleman we were talking to at your church, he's joking. <laughs> now they knew, <laughs> but it made you so uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> However, I, I would not, I would not call that a lie. So, so what I've enjoyed about this is I've enjoyed watching you guys as she's getting older. Wait, getting older. When did this start? Like last year. Yeah. It's been going. She has believed that she has a sibling she's never met. And who is in good standing with the family for a year? About that. She also believed in corn dog plants. <laughs> <laughs> Cattails. I knew exactly what you meant. You... <laughs> they grew around the pond. <laughs> Wait, believed or did she still think they're corn dogs? She though? she believed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so oh. about that. So oh. she, there's something about being a child and just believing things is beautiful, right? It's credulity. What yes, does that mean? It's wonderful. Well, if somebody's incredulous, okay, they absolutely do not believe that. Okay, you don't use the normal version of the word very often, but credulity. Okay, yeah. She, so she believes. So there's a couple of things that you guys have done to make this more elaborate, right? Like what kinds of things? He loves barbecue. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, with Alabama white sauce or more like Memphis or St. Louis? What kind of barbecue? Barbecue sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Shredded pork. Uh, 
What else? What else is this backstory? Uh, his birthday is June 5th, 2000. Really? Yeah. He's a 22 year old college. Well, he's into grad school. Mm-hmm. I yeah, didn't know. I, I didn't it. know his birthday was June 5th. Hmm. We also have his phone upstairs. You know, there's a there's an issue with that. You know, mom and dad got married in 2003. <laughs> that. <clears throat> yeah. So that. That, that does add a degree of trickiness. That makes it a little strange. Um, there's going to be some explaining to do when she gets a little older, I think. <laughs> I don't think she knows that, though. Okay. <laughs> Dude, if we've, already, if we've already decided to just go with lion, just change it. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, just change it uh, to four. Okay. Like we might have, It's 2004. See? It's just there. It's solved. People forget things. Yeah, there you go. Um I'll help your kids lie. What about the what about the pen pal? <laughs> You'll help them lie. I, I won't. What about the pen pal situation? What? Um, Ooh, his yeah. his youth leader actually heard about this and decided that he would be his he would be Harold. So we would send um, letters oh, to no. to Harold. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh dear. And so how many letters have we received from Harold? So there's been one letter that was written. But we don't think it ever got mailed. We lost it. So we don't have any letters from Harold yet. So right now she doesn't think Harold is real. I, so like we we gotta oh. we're we're no we're working on like sending a letter to him to make sure that she knows he's real. How do you explain away Harold not showing up for Christmas? Oh, he doesn't get off for Christmas break or oh. Thanksgiving. Strict mm-hmm. school. Why wouldn't? Yeah, New Mexico State. That's. I mean, notorious rigorous program, rigorous, like they're down there, border country mm-hmm. like that. Nah, they're not letting you off for a holiday. Not after mm-hmm. what they've been through. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like this whole thing's hanging by a thread. I, I don't know if you're ever going to be able to get her back on board with this now that she doubts it. There's some pretty serious holes to this story. She doubts it because the letter wasn't sent. She think we purposely didn't send the letter. And just like hope that she would continue to believe. Have you? Where was it addressed to? So, are you saying she sent a letter to Harold, or Harold sent a letter to her? She She, wrote a letter for Harold that we accidentally lost. She literally wrote a letter for Harold Mm -hmm. and and a drawing. What was the drawing? I don't know. (laughs) What? She wrote her brother a (laughs) letter. I don't have a brother anymore. (laughs) You monsters. (laughs) <laughs> she wrote him a letter. She just drew a picture for him. What is the matter with you people? What did the letter say? Do you remember? That she wrote Harold. I do not remember, but the picture was of her and Harold holding hands. Oh, 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 oh my heart. <laughs> was it really? What color hair did Harold have in the picture? You guys remember? Brown. Did he look like Zac Efron with jeans that ride right around the bottom of his hips and a super extra long tie and <clears> a <throat> swoosh of hair going across his forehead covering his eyebrows playfully? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So so where do you think this is going? So you guys have done this for a while. She's getting smart, right? So what do you think the plan is here? Where, where are we going with this? Have you thought this through, young man? No. Youngest son? Have you just extrapolate in your mind. Tell me where this is going. I don't think it's going anywhere. How do you see this ending? Not ending. <laughs> well, if she doesn't believe it anymore, I think well, it's over in a hurry. Yeah, but if she doesn't believe it, then she probably won't believe it again. What could you do to change that? I don't know. Well, let's, let's just say that you had to get her to we, believe it. What would you do? We could end up sending letters like ourselves to Harold. As like, we hope to see you, but we know your school's really strict. That sounds like a Civil uh, War era letter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dearest brother Harold, it is with deepest regrets that we must celebrate this Christmas season apart from you. Our hearts do yearn for your presence. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's the thing about letters. Not a lot of people do that. What about other means of communication that you might be able to employ that could be more convincing. He doesn't have a phone. His yeah. friends do. He doesn't. Why doesn't Harold have a phone? Because when he was moving he to college, have. he accidentally left it at our house. And so mm-hmm. it and it died okay. forever. Forever. It, it's and, a flip phone. Yeah, it's a flip phone. And our youngest sister found it and she asked us what it was and we just said it was Harold's phone. Are you talking about that little 
toy phone she plays with? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've told her that's Harold's phone. We told her that's Harold's phone. <laughs> Harold's phone. Oh, dear. She's going to charge that thing up and go through the contacts. What you- At some point, she's going to figure it out. She's going to find a micro USB charger. <laughs> okay, yeah. so here, here's the question. Are you worried that this might damage trust with your sister? Oh. I'm not. I'm not at all. Can you speak to why you're not? Not really. I don't really know why. So it might. It might. Okay. It's very possible it will. Okay. <laughs> that was the least, <laughs> least convincing statement of reassurance I've maybe ever heard. Let me just review what just happened. Your dad asked a question. Are you at all concerned this might damage trust long term with your sister? You all said no, not at all. I said, why is that? And you all said, well, we do not have reasons per se. Oh, well, she forgets very quickly. Okay, that's a reason. Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. I, yeah. I don't think she's going to forget this Harold thing. I don't think this is going away. You got to do something to get rid of Harold. Are you guys going to kill Harold? No. I mean, I hate to say. We might have to. No. I hate to even suggest it, guys. Why Uh, would you kill Harold? He has to go. No. He's a fugitive running from all, and he moves down to Mexico. Yes. Yes. Or Brazil. Are you guys making this up on the fly right now? No, this is real. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we we, we just got a text message from Harold with the phone he doesn't have. (laughs) Okay. Okay. It's so, a big picture then. We went through three options just now. Option one, kill him. Option two, tell her. Option three, deeper down the rabbit hole and come up with more ideas. But you said something interesting there on option two, and that is we'll just tell her, and that's how we would let her off the hook. But what about the old psychological adage that it is easier to convince someone of a lie in the first place than it is to convince them they have been lied to. In other words, it's just, it's tough to get somebody to realize that they got tricked on something. It might might be hard for her to let it go. It's like the sunk cost fallacy because you're like, oh, that means I was dumb. Yes. Okay. Well, we're all going down together, so. (laughs) I love that. So you guys, would you say you're scamming your sister or you're having fun with her? How would you say it? We're just messing around. <laughs> what's the, wait, what's the difference between that and a scam? Um, a scam is wanting something from you. We don't want anything from her. We're not going for her money. <laughs> what, are, what are you going for? What do you, what do you get out of it? Entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So? Youngest son, what, what's fun about it to you? Why is it entertaining? Because we get to watch her ask questions about him that we get to make up. <laughs> that, that felt pretty honest. That sure did. <laughs> I mean, it's it's oddly all felt pretty honest, even though at its heart, it's a complete deception. <laughs> so it's, it's an interesting dichotomy that way. Yeah, it's interesting. So I thought this was pretty interesting. So Sandlin family, we, we know about this thing that happens during Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, some families do some things at Christmas and some families don't, right? Right. Do we do it or not do it? We don't. We, don't. we do not. How, how does that make you feel that mommy and daddy didn't do that one with you? We filled that hole with Harold. <laughs> 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 All right. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. All right. Well, I love you kids. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we're going to talk to your little sister now and uh, see what she has to say. Is there anything you want us to ask her? Ask her um, what he thinks about barbecue. What Harold's favorite th- food. Okay. Yeah. And she's how old again? Seven. 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 I, okay. To recap, option number one for where you guys are currently at strategically is make something happen to Harold. That could be very emotionally scarring for a little girl. Option number two is come out and tell her. And when I pitched that idea to you, you were like, well, we just tell her. That's how we do it. And I'm like, but what if she's already in too deep? What if you can't commit to it? So we went down that road. We considered that. Option number three is we just take it a little bit further down the rabbit hole here. And we just wait until she grows up enough to figure it out for herself. If, and I'm not proposing this, but if hypothetically I were to help you think of some ideas to go further down the rabbit hole, what kind of ideas do you think we might want to start poking around at? We need to bring in uh Zac Efron impersonator. Oh my goodness. That has to be a thing. And we've been trying to get our uncle to like 
Photoshop a photo of Zach Heffron on a New Mexico State student. With the t-shirt on and everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I don't really know what we could do. What about having a series of Zoom calls that you schedule cleverly to just end as your mom and your sister are coming in the door? Like you could do that. I mean, there doesn't even have to be anybody on the other end of the Zoom call. You could just record somebody saying, gotta go, love you all, bye-bye, and then you're just there and like, bye-bye, and you're just talking to a video. This is true. The letter thing, it's not going to work. There's yes, it will. Even a child knows no one writes letters. How many other people do you write letters to? We're required to write letters. Okay, that's pretty great. <laughs> that's pretty great. There's one thing we need to for you to do. Oh? When she comes in here and if she asks any questions about Harold... Make something up. And then we need you to tell us that after it. I don't know that I'm prepared to do that. But the jury's wait, 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 still out for me. You're asking Mr. Matt to participate in the legend that is Harold Wilberforce Sandlin? It's, it's a privilege. It's a myth. Oh, well, that's different. Wait, wait, wait. What's the difference between a legend and a myth? A legend could be real or could not be real. And a myth just is made up. We all know that a myth is just like something to teach you a lesson. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever hear the one about um, that little boy who lied about the wolves? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, unrelated. Just, okay. just thinking. <laughs> that, was, that was a metaphor. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. The honest assessment. This is, I mean, it's tricky because this is really fun, but I need to tell you I'm not above it. So one time we had a field trip to the Denver Zoo. And we came home from the Denver Zoo and we were all in the vehicle together. And I remember I was in the back. It was a Datsun 210. It was a hatchback. It had wood on the sides. Um, Side note, that's what I learned how to drive in. Stick shift Datsun B210. Really? That's so cool. Yeah, it's orange. Really? Mine was yeah, kind of like rust colored. That's really neat. It's just another thing that we got. That's, fan that's fantastic. So we're driving along in the Datsun 210. And mom looks back and says, well, how was the zoo? And I, without looking up from my book, said, it was nice, but most of the animals had died. <laughs> and mom and dad in the front seat shook their heads in disappointment. And my brother warmed all the way up, realizing what I just said, looking at me. He said, they did? And his eyes were shiny. Because there was just a, there's just a little bit of tear forming up. And... Then mom could hear the little quiver in his voice. It was like, no, your brother is just like, let me at least run a little bit further with this. The point is, I only made up one thing and my brother was 80% of the way to the dam breaking and tears coming down his sweet cheeks. So I, your dad's question about like, are there any long-term ramifications here? I'm just saying it's worth thinking about that. We're all going going down together <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. and the only reason we got my small group leader in on this is because when he was like 18 his sister he has a sister and she was she was also like eight, about 18 okay and his sister looks exactly like his mom and he looks nothing like either of his parents oh no and he convinced his sister that she was a dog oh no oh oh no like you're striking to like the stuff that makes people who they are. Oh, gee. So, ah, uh, okay. I know, I know a more harmless version of this prank that another family, friends of ours pulled. They convinced their two youngest boys that they had already been to Disney World. And every time they asked to go to Disney World, they were like, again? What? Okay, that's yeah, funny. We dude. went, we saved up forever. But they, but they were like you. They never really lied. They'd always just frame the pitch so it wasn't like, yeah, Disney World was super expensive back then. It was a, a lot of savings we had to do. Oh, back and then. they said we've already been. They meant they had already been. Correct. The, oh, the we. Yeah. Clever. So they they just it was a it was a brilliant play. And I think those kids are your age, and they still think they've been to Disney World. <laughs> which now I'm just gonna throw this out. It raises a question for me that. I need the three of you to think about what things might you think are real. Oh, 
that are actually things that have been inceptionized upon you without the use of lying. Just something to think about while you're to, to going clear, down this road. Your mother and I actually do love you. We don't just say that. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 It's good now. Okay. Good. Is, there, is there anything you suspect might be an elaborate long-term prank being played upon you and this whole setup here where I'm playing dumb is actually just a way with mics on to break the thing to you finally? What do you think, Dad? <laughs> I think your your brother's face right now is hilarious. <laughs> He's like, what's about to happen? We have no idea. Well, now I'm confused. What? Would would I do something like that to you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Why would I do that? Because it's funny. <laughs> it would be funny if such a thing were happening. So this is why this is hard for me. I've worked a tremendous amount of time in my life to make you kids funny. Like, I want you to be funny. Right? It's working. But I also want you to not lie, and I I don't want to lie to you. And this is hilarious. So I'm in a tough spot here because this is absolutely hilarious, and I'm so proud of the story that is Harold Wilberforce Sandlin that I just don't want it to stop. That's where I'm at. So, yeah. What do you have to say about that? I agree. I don't want it to stop either. (laughs) Well, here's what I think we should do. I think we should let you guys go, and then we'll go, I guess, uh, interview your sister and see where she's at with this whole thing. What do you think about that, Matt? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be precious. (laughs) This episode of No Dumb Questions is brought to you by Raycon. Raycon makes earbuds that we both use all the time and that we like. Destin, what do you like about Raycons? I like that they charge in the little, little package. Like, you charge... The thing, it's got a USB-C connector on it. You plug it up, and then it charges the little pill, I call it. There's, it's, I don't know, it's like a little plastic folding yeah, pouch kind of thing. pill, too, like a shell? Yeah, a shell maybe. Yeah, like a little clamshell kind of thing. And so it mm. charges in that, and um, I don't know, it's like got magnets in all the right places, so when it closes, it snaps shut. Whoever designed it got all the haptic feedback correct. Like the way mm, you, yeah, yeah. it clicks and, and pops and all, all the things, it just feels good. And I like it. And I like the fact that the outside is that almost rubberized plastic. So it, it feels good in the hand. I, I like Raycons. They're, they're high quality in how they're made mechanically. And I've been doing a lot of work on that kind of stuff lately, injection molding and stuff like that. So I like to think about how the Raycons were made. They're cost effective too. So if you run them through the washing machine, not that I've done that five times, I have never killed a set of Raycons in the washing machine. You're not like allowed to say that they're waterproof or anything. But all I can say is I've never killed a pair in the washing machine. What are your thoughts all on I that? All I can say is mine are very clean. <laughs> my, Think of that whatever you want. Yeah, you're not allowed to say to put them. Yeah, exactly. No, I finally did wreck my first pair. So I've got six at this point. And then I just got Camilla the rose gold ones. And I've got, I mean, I share them with my kids. And then I've got one for each vehicle. So just I always, always, always have them. And if we take a car or a call rather in the vehicle, we can pop that in and kind of lean away from the family and chat a little bit. And that's another thing in the early going, they didn't really have the microphone side of things integrated and figured out. And I didn't, I just used them for listening exclusively. Now I take calls on the Raycons. I'll just have them in for a good chunk of the day and listen to the things I want to listen to audio books or whatever. But then also if a call comes in, it it works great for that as well. Well, What is your ear hole size? (laughs) Is it like standard ear uh, hole or do you have to change adapters? Dude, I don't. Because it comes with a little pack on. of adapters. Do you have I a. I know, but I don't want to brag. It's really big. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to step up the. Yeah. This it's, like, yeah. I'm big, 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 big ear holes. I hear a lot. And that's a curse. You it's hear a lot. in some ways, too. <laughs> yeah. I just. I don't know. <laughs> I hear um, a lot. Impress my friends, intimidate my enemies. I think you understand what I'm saying. It's I, big ear holes. I, what are you going to do, I, right? I understand what you're saying. Well, tell me about uh, yeah. when, when you hear a lot, what sound profiles do you hear with? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a segue. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Why does anyone listen to this? Because it, it's quality. Go ahead. Oh my goodness. No, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Well, let's do talk about the sound profiles. I listen to the bass one because it sounds good to me and I like music that has bass. Then I particularly like the bass line on things because I enjoy playing the bass guitar. So I use that profile the most 
What about you? Uh, I just go with the normal. Like the, the, I usually don't change the profiles. How do you, how do you change it? You hold the left earbud for three seconds. Uh huh. And then I think on mine, it just tells you what profile you're in now, but you can hear the difference. You can figure it out pretty easy. You got the pure sound, you got the balance sound, you got the bass sound. I listen to the bass sound. You know what I think about a lot? What? The lady that recorded the, I've tried to figure out how to record her sound but i can't but she it says raycon power on there's a lady that recorded that voice it's like a voiceover actress and i've often wondered like who is that person yeah but it, it's becoming pavlovian for me when that turns on it's like all right hey now the fun starts okay cool what's the, what's the offer this time let me see okay ready to buy something small with a big impact go to buyraycon.com slash ndq Today, and you get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash NDQ for no dumb questions, and that'll score you 15% off. It doesn't matter what kind you get on the website, how many you get, you get 15% off. It's pretty solid. That was a pretty slick line there that you said at the beginning, ready to buy something small with a big impact. That kind of checks out. You're smart. You know the deal here. If you want to buy a high-quality product that won't break the bank, you can do it. Buyraycon.com slash in DQ, that'll get you 15% off. Thanks to Raycon for supporting the podcast, and thanks to you for supporting the sponsors. It means a lot. Thank you very much. Okay, Matt. Um, here on the phone with us is someone I would like to introduce you to. Well, actually, I'll let them okay. introduce themselves. Would, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, Matt, I am Harold Sandlin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, what a pleasure. I think highly of your family. I hold them all in the highest of esteems. Uh, secondly, it's baffling that I have never heard of you until today. I've never seen a photograph of you. I've never heard any mentions about you. You don't come up at extended family gatherings on New Year's or other holidays. But you know, obviously, whatever the story is behind that, it's just an absolute pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I like Harold's voice. <laughs> He's so meek and nice. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, um, okay, what the heck is going on? So, my understanding is that uh, my children wrote you a letter, Harold. Is that correct? And that, you re and you received it. That is correct. It came in the mailbox. Okay. Would you uh, Would you please read the letter that you received from my my children? I will. It says, "Dear Harold, it is your younger brother and your youngest sister. We would like to know if you have gotten a phone yet, and if so, what is your oh. phone number?" What is your favorite oh. color? Your youngest sister would like to know how much longer you were in college. Will you please write us back? Your siblings. P.S. Do you like barbecue? And it has a lovely picture <laughs> of what I believe is the two of us picking apples. And just having a very good time. <laughs> and to be clear, you did write a response to this letter. Oh, yes. I did write a response. Okay. So, uh. Matt, I have a recording of the moment yes. in my truck when we got Wait. the letter. And it, you mailed the letter through the United States Postal Service? Um, actually, due to a lack of time, I handed the letter to Destin's son <laughs> at church <laughs> just last night. <laughs> okay. Did you put a return address on it? Oh, I did. <laughs> I very much did. And, and did you... Procure the name of the city in which New Mexico State University is located to see through this all properly? Yes. Uh, uh, luckily, spelling is a whole lot e easier than pronunciation. Uh, so the city that New Mexico State is in is Las Cruces. Yeah. Or Cruces. Oh, my. Las Cruces. Yeah, that's we've right. Been, we've been very thorough. <laughs> uh, I'm impressed. Yeah. No stamp, though. I noticed there was no stamp. Yeah, I told, I told your son last night he may want to procure a stamp. Uh, to make it look believable. So when he pulled it out, sometimes those fall the, off. He pulled it out in the truck to read to her. She said, "There's no stamp," and he said, "The laws must be different in New Mexico." <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, but I did universal posted. Yeah, yeah buddy, I did actually uh, turn on my phone recorder to record the moment that it was opened and read to my daughter. So I, I'll play that for you now. Hold on, wait, wait. What is this? This is a letter from Harold. We says, sent a letter to him. Okay. Uh, it says, unfortunately, I still don't have a personal phone or an email. 
New Mexico State University is quite strict on encouraging us to focus on our studies. It all goes according to plan. I should graduate in the spring of 2024. How old are you guys now? It seems unreal how long it's been since I've been in Alabama. I do like barbecue, but it's not as near as good as here as it is back home. My favorite color is Aggie Crimson. Your sibling, Harold. P.S. Tell mom and dad I said hi. Go Aggies. Go Aggies. Who are the Aggies? Is that New Mexico State? I th- I th- yeah, I think the Aggies are New Mexico State. <laughs> Oh. Is there anything on the back? Okay, that means it might actually be from Harold. Because I told you that it would be great if you drew something on the back. What, what happened? There's Did nothing he... on the back. There's nothing on the back? So that, oh. that means that if, if it was you, then you would have acted like you knew. See, I did not write this letter. How would it come in our newspaper thing? He, he wrote our name on it. Uh, and our address on it. What? What? Yeah. Why does it say M-M? That's New Mexico. Yeah, that's the abbreviation. That's the abbreviation New, for New Mexico. New shirt's for the man. New Mexico's for the man. Uh, there's no stamp on it, so that means there's different laws in New Mexico than there is in Alabama. So that means there's probably um, no, just like no stamp laws in New Mexico. Interesting. Is there a way you can tell if it's a real letter? If there is, can you check? Can I check? I don't know a way. If you tell me a way, I'll do it. Easy peasy. <laughs> uh, I'm hungry. Y'all want to get some food? Yes. Let's get some food. The whole thing is just a treat, and I respect how much you're all committed to seeing this thing through. But listen to that little squeaker's voice. I know her and her soft little heart. I mean, y'all are making it seem like she has a brother I'm pretty sure she doesn't have at this point. Did you feel any kind of compunction morally about writing a letter like that to a teeny tiny squeaky little girl? Yeah, I I guess I should reveal that this isn't actually Harold on the phone. This is my friend Chappie. Oh hey, uh yeah okay. I'm look. I'm just gonna level with you. I had that one. I, I had done the math that you were not Harold, <laughs> yeah. though I did not know who you were. So, but I've heard a lot about you. We haven't met in person. Uh, nice to phone meet you. Nice to phone meet you as well. Um, it was certainly troubling uh, to be part of toying with a young girl and what she understands to be true. Uh, but after I realized uh, more of the landscape of things certainly made it exciting to play along with the bit. Fair enough. Chappie, thank you so much. Uh, You have invested a tremendous amount in my family's life. I'm grateful for that. Thank you for working with my son at church, all the things. Um, Yeah, so thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to do that. (laughs) So, Matt, there's a couple more layers to the onion that I think um, you'll be interested to peel back with me, so uh, let's go do that now. Sounds good. All right, I'm happy, Mm -hmm. Matt, to be joined here in the spare bedroom with the microphone set up by my beautiful seven-year-old daughter. How are you doing? Good. Doing good. All right. Do you know this guy's name? Matt. That's right. That's Matt Whitman. That's right. That's I've known you since forever, as you understand forever to be. He's known you a long time. Do you ever not remember Mr. Whitman? Like, do you ever remember a time in your life when you didn't know that he existed? When I was born. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. I didn't know he existed. But okay. there's probably a lot of people you didn't know existed back then. Yeah, exactly. All right. So what we're going to talk about is something that your brother and brother and sister were telling us about, which is Harold. Harold. Does Harold have a middle name? What's Harold's middle name? Danger. No, it's not Danger. They call them Harold Wilberforce. Wilberforce. So we're going to talk about Harold. 
And right now, I know that you're a smart little girl, and I know that you're doing little things in your head. I knew deities about him. You're, you're trying to figure out how I want to talk about Harold, aren't you? Yeah. So, Mr. I, Matt is in on our secret. You and I have a secret about Harold, don't we? Mr. Matt knows our secret, I think. Or I'm going to tell him our secret. He's not real. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tell Mr. Matt. He doesn't know. He's not real. <laughs> they made him up. <laughs> What? Even mom and dad. Wait, your dad told you that you had a brother named Harold Wilberforce with mm. those words? He's not real. My mom even says it. And if she had had gave birth to him or adopted him, she would know he was real. Yeah. And if if he didn't, well, yeah, yeah. Right? So so your older brother and your other other brother and your sister. And they told us he doesn't like barbecue. He doesn't like barbecue? I thought he loved barbecue. That's what they he said. He doesn't like it at all. Okay. One time, her friend tried to give him it, and he smacked it on the floor. Whoa. Really? Yeah. So what are they doing with Harold? What are, what are they kind of doing? Trying to make me believe. Yes, they are. Yeah. And then you did something one time. You came up to Daddy, and you said, Daddy, what did you say? He's Harold real. And what did I say? No. He's not real. It's that simple. And so I tried to trick my my brothers and sisters to think I believed, so I wrote a letter and drew a picture of him. And so I said, Sister, will you put this in the mail? And she said, Sure. Next day I come back to her. Did you send it? And she said, Um. What'd she do? No. What'd she. She didn't, because she said, I don't know his address. So what's she doing? She's trying to. To make me think that she doesn't know it, but she doesn't know it at all because he's not real. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you see what we're doing here, Matt? Oh, I don't. Do, I mean, yes, yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I love it. So, so they think you're tricking that th they're tricking you, but I'm tricking them. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Oh, this is gold, isn't it? This is. Wait a minute. But haven't you seen pictures of Harold Wilberforce Sandler? Nope. You've never seen a picture of him. Nope. Well, they've shown you not some pic they've shown you some pictures and told you that it was him, right? But it was not. Okay. Who was it? It w I don't know. But it was the same they showed you a bunch of pictures of the same person over and over and over. Dad? Yeah. I don't think they ever showed me a picture. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. I, yeah. I don't know if they did, but they might have. It might bad memory. Yeah, it it might be I think at this point, it's just a part of the legend. They've built this legend up in their mind, and they want it to be like, they think that they're tricking you really, really, really well. But not at all. Not at all. But you've done a good job of letting them think that they've tricked you, right? Yes, sir. But you haven't lied to them. I, th I no. think I think that's interesting. What you've been doing is you've been asking questions. Instead of being like, um, Harold's real, or... That would be lying. So I've been asking questions instead. Like, Clever. can you send this letter? Why doesn't he like barbecue? Mm -hmm. I asked, why does, it, does he like barbecue? So you never lie. It still counts. <laughs> it still counts? <laughs> what, what did you put in your letter to him? I don't know. Oh, you don't remember what it said. Did yeah. you draw him a picture? On it? Yeah. I drew me and a guy with a beard okay, and sure. hair on his head. He wasn't bald, I don't think. Yeah. It's pretty interesting, right? So what do you think about this whole Harold thing? Do you think that they're trying to trick you? Like, what? just in general, what do you think about this whole thing? They're trying to make me think that I have another brother. Is that good or bad? I don't get it. What do you mean? Is it a good thing that they're doing this, or is it a bad thing that they're doing this? It's a bad thing because they're kind of lying. Oh, I think they're kind of straight up lying to you. Why do you think they're doing this? I don't know. I think they think it's funny that I don't know. Hmm. Sometimes. So you think it's fun for them? Yes. Sister's devious. <laughs> She's devious. I've seen that. Yeah.
I know some chivious people. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking because the word is mischievous. Why would you fix that? <laughs> mischievous. Now you just added a word to my vocabulary, and it's chivious. <laughs> <laughs> if you can be mischievous, you should be able to be chivious. That's true. <laughs> should work both ways. That's true. Incredulous and credulous, right? It's same, yeah. same concept. Okay. So, do you think that what they're doing is mean? No. So it's not. So it's not it's, mean. It's not. What is it? Do you think? I think it's funny for them. Is it funny for you? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> After having been on the receiving end of a prank of a trick, do you think you might ever try to trick somebody else? I think I know what that means, but no, I will not try to trick someone else. I will try to question someone else. Ah, uh, okay. I think it's kind of fun to play along, though, don't you? Yeah, it is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to pretend that there's a person named Harold. It would be more fun if you were in on the pretending, right? And you kind of are in on the pretending, just a little bit different than what they were, you know, they're thinking it is, right? They're trying to make me think it, but I'm basically trying to make them think it. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea how I explain that. Can we do a little bit of strategizing together? Sure. Thank you. How do you want to reveal to them one day that you knew all along? How are you going to tell them? Booyah! Booyah! <laughs> You're just gonna say that. Just gonna yep. say booyah. <laughs> booyah! Here is not real. <laughs> I think we're done here. Yeah, I think we are. At the end of college, if he doesn't come home, how do you have proof? Mm. That's a great point. It's a great point. Well, let's say <laughs> that a couple of years from now, you tell them finally. Now, guess what, guys? I knew there was no Harold all along. Booyah! booyah. <laughs> I forgot the booyah. And the hand gesture that accompanies it. <laughs> booyah! <laughs> yeah. Then For the third chair, she's booting her hands like a big gangster pose, like, booyah! <laughs> so it's this little bitty girl. So then, what do you think they're going to say when you tell them that? What do you mean? What do you mean? Harold is real. <laughs> and then they just make something up. Um... He got married at college, and he's living with someone else. And then I, and I, then I would say, "But why wasn't I invited to the wedding if right? you were?" Yes, yes. So how are you going to prove to them that you knew all along? Booyah! <laughs> I have a way that we could prove. To them oh, Mister Matt has a calling idea. that calling in. That's but one they way. Just, but they would just say. But we don't know his phone number. I would like to try something, if I may, real quick. This is just my phone here. Yes. It's got, it's got a camera on it. Let's see. Yes. Um, is it okay if I hit record for a minute on my, sure. on my phone? I'm just gonna make a quick video. What day is it today? Um, December thirty first, two thousand twenty two. Good job. That's excellent. And how old are you? Seven and a half. And February. Are, I'm going to turn eight. And are you of sound mind? That means, is your mind working correctly? Kind of. I'm a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're joyful. You, your mind is working excellent. Okay, then yes. Okay. So being of sound mind on this 31st day of December, 2022, what message would you like to record that we could play back for your siblings later on when you reveal to them that you knew all along? So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's the message. <laughs> Did you know all along that there was no Harold? Yes. And so even right now as we're recording this, you know that there's no Harold. Yes, sir. So who is the actual joke on here? Who's getting tricked? Are you being tricked or are they being tricked? That? <laughs> Say it like a question. <laughs> Do you think I did an okay thing by letting them play for a while? Yeah. But, you know, I The could... fun needs to end sometime. 
Does it? Mm-hmm. So, and you need to review. Do I? So as the dad, do you think that it's okay that I've let them continue to think that they're fooling you even though they're not? Yeah, because you need some more time to trick them. Oh, okay. So it's been fun for me too. Well, let me ask you this. Has daddy ever lied to you? No. Why? Because he never lies <clears throat> to anyone. I, I just, well, I, I have lied before. But uh, just, yeah, like you said in the Yeah, car. once. Oh, yeah? I remember a very specific lie. Um, the perfume one. That was one of them in fifth grade. Um, he put a lot of perfume on that his dad had in the closet. Okay. And this guy, it, he put so much. He just went exactly everywhere right. around his body, just like in those cartoon things. Mm-hmm. But then he walked to school. and Well, first he smelt it and he was like, Oh, man. And so he walked to school, and there was a guy that walked up and said, Did you put your dad's perfume on? And he said, No. I said it spilled out of the closet and landed on me, right? Yeah, but that wasn't the truth. That wasn't the truth. and You just went... And I lied, and I knew I lied the moment I did it, and I called my teacher years later because I had remembered I had never asked about or I never basically confessed right so I remember calling as an adult like my fifth grade teacher and it was like hey it was either you or my guidance counselor but I told you that I had like dropped cologne on me but I actually sprayed it all over me and that's bugged me for years and I just need to tell you that you don't think there's some kind of statute of limitations on fifth grade lies I, it was just important to me it was very important to all me. right yeah yeah. That's... Also, I, I lied about stealing the M and M's when I was like three years old. I stole the M and M's out of the jar, and mom and dad were like, "Did you take the M and M's?" I'm like, "Nope." And there's chocolate on my face. I did. I stole those M and M's. I switched the sticker on a cassette tape that I wanted. I had like eight dollars and forty five cents, and it was eight ninety nine. But there was another sticker right next to it that said seven ninety nine. Whoa. You, I just switched the sticker in that discount cassette bin. And you know it too, don't you? And so does the person who I did it to because I did the same thing. Called, <laughs> you called them I back. I called them back like a Boy Scout years. Uh, yeah. You probably don't remember me. <laughs> yes. uh, now that I have kids, I kind of. <laughs> it's important. I think that's important. I did that. Yeah. I did that. But you know who I never called back, kiddo? My fourth grade teacher to tell her that that wasn't milk I spilled on my pants. What was it? Pee. Oh, <laughs> she probably knew. My mom made me these really nice corduroy pants and I couldn't, the button, there was something wrong. The button wasn't oh, designed yeah. properly. I remember the story. And there was yeah. nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do. I mean, I, like a whole day, dude. Come on, like you're allowed, come on. You could have just got the scissors. You, you know what, that's, that's. That's not bad. That's a good. Thing. I don't know cut, how I would have resealed my pants and then after just, that. No, not like that. Okay. Like cut the stuff that's around the button. Mm-hmm. Around the button. And then the get visual. a paper clip when you're done. And just go. Ch- a paper clip. Why didn't <sighs> I do that? Didn't think of the paper clip. That's a good idea. I don't know if I could find everybody to. I lied to about that one though, because there's a lot of people. Yeah, I led with it too. <laughs> Got on the bus. Hey, it's just milk. Hey, everybody, milk, just let me know. Milk, just let milk you know. all just the way milk. down to the end <laughs> to the last row. <laughs> It smells like pee. It's actually milk. So we're fine. It's weird. Just weird how that fine. works. So yeah. <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted to have you on. I just wanted to have you on to talk about Harold. I thought Mr. Matt would find it enjoyable to know that you're in on it. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Did, did you see that coming? No. You should have got the popcorn if you wanted to have a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I should. No, I didn't see it coming. I knew there had to be another twist. Yeah. But I didn't know this was the twist, and I was really nervous to get back on here and be like, well, put yourself in my shoes. What do you want me to do here? Right. And so my plan was just to be quiet and nod a lot and make you, smiling you, sounds you know real close to the mic like this. if she knew or if she didn't, yeah. Mr. Matt didn't know if you knew about Harold being not real. Or not. So he didn't know what to do. I knew what to do with your siblings, kind of. Wait, what were they talking about? Tricking you. They were talking about the trick. And at first they ran it like they were trying to trick me. And that lasted for one. Yeah. One question's <laughs> worth of credibility. <laughs> so, they did not have their story mapped out very well. They did, they, they yes, actually, they didn't remember. <laughs> it's hard to remember all your lies, isn't it? Yep. Um. So should I let the 
siblings listen to this because they'll they'll know that you're in on it at that point. Yeah, but can I say one more thing? Yeah. yeah. Booyah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, daughter. <laughs> this episode of No Dumb Questions is brought to you by you, you being the patrons, you being the people who listen to what we're doing here. You understand what we're going for and you want to be behind it. It means a ton. If you want to join those patrons and supporting the program, you can do that at patreon.com slash no dumb questions. Seriously, it means a ton and it is the fuel that keeps this thing rolling forward. We really appreciate you. <laughs> Chappie, you there? Here I am. So to be clear, you were in on this the whole time. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this has been going uh, somewhere around six months. And, uh, <laughs> between between you and your son, I have been informed every step along the way, which uh, certainly made it easier <laughs> to play along with. Um, not Not feeling like I was hurting anyone. Basically, you knew that Harold wasn't real, and you knew that the little one knew that, and she was playing them. Yes, yeah. Her knowing that I wasn't real is what set the hook for me to be involved. Uh, I love being involved in there the is. humbling of young men. <laughs> <laughs> and it all comes into focus. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> yep, I see it all now. So to be clear, you were playing my oldest son the whole time. Correct. Yes. <laughs> that was And to be clear, he has it coming. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. All right. Good, good. Good. You can't mess with your sister that much. No, not not to that level. Yeah. I think he's starting to cross some lines. I think so too. <laughs> pretty fun right that's pretty fun yeah and so she has a thing like we turned what could have been an l into a w oh yeah yeah and so it's pretty cool and so she's I'm like hey it's your secret and daddy's secret and this is what we're gonna do right and she's like yeah well and this is how you outmaneuver something either done harmlessly or maliciously at your expense it's a lesson in how to outmaneuver that without going scorched earth and they aren't going scorched earth on her this this is not meant to be hurtful or harmful to her at all. It's really a gesture of inclusion and kindness and love from them toward her. Like They're all in on it. It's the kind of war story that y'all laugh about with your adult siblings later on. But she's getting a bonus lesson out of it, which is instead of being the younger sibling who freaks out and feels powerless, here's how to use cleverness, mental judo to flip the thing back around and and make the joke serve a different purpose than what they thought. I, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I, my hope was that this would be something that long after I'm gone, they could laugh about and they could remember that little game that we all played together on each other. Mm -hmm. And dad was in on it. And uh, Tara, to her credit, has from the first second it started happening, she's like, I'm not lying to my daughter. I'm out. And so she's like, I'm, I'm out of this. Whatever happens, I'm out. <laughs> so. Okay, I, you've talked about it before. Real quick, though. Why? We both agree. Don't lie to our kids. We don't lie to our kids either. Clearly, you and I define lie a little differently. We draw that line a little differently. I'm leaving a lot more room for dry humor, shtick, things like that. But we agree on the principle. A question that I don't think gets asked enough when you're talking about just ethics or moral absolutes is just why. If it's definitely the right thing to do, it should be easy for you to defend the policy. Why don't you lie to your kids? It's a great question. And the ultimate answer is I want them to know that their father is a person of integrity. And so they can know that if he tells me something, it's true. Even if it's not something I want to hear, it is true. Meaning in the future, when they get older and in their upper teenage years, they're going to have conflicts. They're going to have relationship problems with, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff like that. And if I want to maintain the level of access in their lives to be able to tell them, hey, straight up, you know I'm not going to lie to you, right? This is the case. This is not the person for you. Or this is, like, I'm telling you this, 
yes, as your father, but number one, as the truth. And the truth is this person will destroy your life. And you need to hear me right now when I'm saying this because it's true. And I've already seen this pay off. My oldest daughter, she had some conflicts in her life. And she was really struggling with something. I pulled her aside. I was like, hey, here's the deal. This is the truth. And I told her the truth straight up. And it's not what she wanted to hear. And she's like, you know what? That is the truth. Because you wouldn't tell me something that wasn't the truth. And it was just maintaining the level of access and influence over my children in Mm -hmm. such a way that, I don't know, super important. So that's why I do it. And Um, that's why we do things at Christmas a certain way. And that's... right. Yeah, and it's so, why we say no to almost every sponsor who approaches us, even here. Right, exactly. If my kids listen to the show. I'm not. I'm not if they talk. see that I say we like this thing, and I never actually use a thing, that I say, oh, it's great. People should you should buy this. You should look it up and consider it. And they know I hate it. That hurts my household. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that, I mean that's the way we're choosing to play it. And but, that cost that cost a lot. <laughs> that cost money. <laughs> Thank you, patrons. <laughs> Thank you, patrons. For making that work. Yeah, it, for making it easier for us to do that. Seriously. I mean, I was an aside, but now that you mention it, yes. I want to follow up on what you just said though, because look, man, in terms of the rare combination of engineer brain that gets used for social acuity, you are very socially attentive among the elite I've ever hung around with, but you get there through a different set of tools and in a weirder way than anybody I've ever been around. You engineer reading other people and being empathetic. It's very odd. Most people I know who are good at that skill are saturated in story and music and art. And there's just this intuition and they feel it. And they're just drenched in reading the classics. And it's just like I aspire to be them. They've got like a sixth sense about other people. You have that too, but you arrive at it. You diagnose people's needs and insecurities and where they need encouragement just differently. You get there differently than other people. It serves you so well. That said, I've seen you be wrong. Oh yeah. Really wrong on assessing people. I've seen you misassess me. I've seen you misassess people we know together. And because you're right, 49 times out of 50, even on big, bold, quick assessments, you know, generally I'm going to go with you, but every now and then, it doesn't pan out that way. And you just saw it wrong. Me too. So what happens if you go to your kid when they're in a crisis at age 17, age 18, you've banked all of this stuff and you say, I always tell you the truth. That person is trouble. And then they weren't. And it turns out that that person was actually right. And you read it wrong. And you pushed the, I tell you the truth chips to the middle on something that isn't necessarily truth or lie but is assessment and evaluation. Something that even though you hit more often than just about anybody I've ever met, you're still human and you're still going to miss on with them at some point. How do you manage that? How do you factor that in so that if you do get an assessment wrong in front of your kids and you do play the truth card, you still have that credibility the next time it's needed? I don't know. (laughs) I haven't. I'm trying to think of times I've played the truth card. I can think of once. And you were right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was obvious. Like it was like any any adult with a functioning brain would have been like. <laughs> you would think so. Uh, uh, but look at planet Earth, man. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I just want to maintain the level of access and influence in my children's lives that I think is, you know, hopefully one day can help them. I don't know. Okay, what if without playing the truth card, you run into a situation where you're like, hey, kid, this is what needs to happen here. I tell you the truth. This is the truth. But you just happen to have read it wrong. And it shakes out that both you and whichever kid you said that to realize, oh, you read it wrong. Where do you go from there? Like, just how do you just tell them? How I do you move forward? Yeah. So, um, so it was the truth when you told them this is exactly how I see it. Yeah, I got but it. But then wrong. the truth when the details come out is I was wrong. I just say I screwed up. You know, please forgive me. It was really interesting. There was a young uh, when my daughter was really really young. Um, I was telling her to do something in, in a group of kids. And there's a guy named Wes, and he said, hey, uh, you should consider asking her to do that instead of telling her. Wow. And I was like, huh. I was like, well, she's got to do this. And, you know, I was, I thought about it, and I was like, huh, I don't negotiate with a four-year-old. <laughs> you know, I was just like, yeah. interesting. 
And so I said, okay, I'll, I'll consider that. And I did. And I carefully considered it. And a week later, I went back to that guy. And I was like, hey, Wes, you told me that the way I said it was a little harsh. And I should have said it this way. You were right. Thanks for telling me that. Because, you know, that's hard to say to somebody. So thanks for telling me that. And uh, I thought that was interesting. Hmm. Just with my kids, I just try to also be aware that I'm a human and I'm a sinner and I'm selfish and I have selfish ambition and pride and ego and all those things. And uh, when you're in the position of father, it's easy to be like, well, I'm the dad. Why? Well, because I said so. That's, that's kind of like the default that mm-hmm. you think about. And um, it's really, really interesting to think of the fact that I screw up quite a bit. So I don't know how we got here, but it's a thing. Well, I'm trying to differentiate between right and the truth. Oh, yeah. So the truth is, you telling the truth is your very best, squarest, earnest read with the people in your innermost circle of trust, your family, about whatever's going on when it's prudent for you to open your mouth. It would be dishonest of you to see a thing a certain way, open your mouth and say the opposite of what you see. Yeah. But you could be wrong. And that's a different category. That's what I'm trying to sort through is I I think... A lot of times this, oh, I'm going to be committed to integrity thing that I think a, a lot of people, I hope, aspire to can get confusing when you start intending to get it right, but you get it wrong. And then maybe you feel some kind of pressure to double down on your misevaluation so that you know everybody still thinks you tell the truth. When, when I, I loved your answer and I loved what you said that, well, if you were wrong, I was wrong is now the truth you need to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. So wrong is, is okay. Yeah. It's, Tell the truth about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. How do you try to present yourself to the kids when you're doing your best to discern the truth, but you're not sure and yet they need leadership from you? What do you do there? Yeah, it is very hard to figure out what the truth is sometimes. And so sometimes I lead with, Hey, you know, dads don't get it all right all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But this is as far as as I can see, this is the right thing to do Mm -hmm. right now. Something along those lines is what I do. What do you, what do you do in that situation? Yeah, uh, I don't think I say that, but the conversation unfolds in such a way that I'm saying that, unless I'm off my game, in which case I'm lazy, lazy at and carefully assess decisions needed to be made, and I wasn't in the best headspace, and I just boom, this is the way the things are. I'm sure. Like sometimes I'll hear a description of like something going on in an interpersonal dynamic, with, you know somebody the kids know from sports or school or whatever. And I'll be like, ah, they're like this. That's what's going on. And then I hear like the next two sentences and realize, yeah, just totally misassessed that. I'll I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, The kids were all playing the other day and we'd worked hard. um, And we said, okay, it's time for free time. You guys can go do whatever you want. And they should have took the cue. Like, Hey, I can literally go do whatever I want. Yes. You have earned it. You can go do whatever you want. They leave the room. Maybe two minutes later, one of them screams like I'm injured, I'm hurt, I'm screaming, and the other ones, and then they start screaming at each other like he did that. She said, you know, and they're all doing this stuff. And I did the dad tornadoes into the room situation. Oh yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah. I just what what are you doing? And then I said, everybody get in there right now because I wanted to just like get it away from mom because mm-hmm. like hey, I just need to go stern dad right now. Mm-hmm. So I said, look, here's the deal. You have free time. You're fighting. And then they were all like, but it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And as I was watching how they were reacting, I was in real time trying to figure out who was the actual instigators. Yeah, it's a clue. Yeah. A clue. <laughs> yeah, playing the game clue. So I figured it out. And when I figured it out, I figured out, okay, these two parties are guilty. Those two parties are innocent. They feel like they're being wrongly accused of something these people were doing right now. So I just went all the way through with the discipline. I was like, hey, this is the deal. And the discipline was a stern talking to mm-hmm. and, you know, angry dad eyes. Mm-hmm. Right? That, that, I know them. That, that I'm going to make them at you now. Ooh. Oh, stop. Please, it hurts. Stop. Yeah. Okay. So that was the discipline. My angry dad eyes also have jaw. <laughs> yeah. That has jaw like yeah. half of Yeah. There's also jaw. I don't do that. Okay. So um, afterwards, we said, okay, you got it? And they're like, yeah, I got it. And they said, okay. I said, go do what you want. And they all went over. I said, hey, you two, come here. I was like. I know exactly what just happened. They did this, and then you got in trouble for it. I'm aware of the situation. I just want you to know I saw what happened. 
they tried to pretend like you were involved. You weren't involved, and I know that. I just need you to know that I know it. Hmm. And they're like, okay. I was like, okay, cool. So that was one time where I clearly got it wrong immediately, and then just tried to, like, signal, hey. <laughs> oh, with the initial burst. Yeah, yeah with the initial tornado. Like, okay, I'm tracking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I guess the answer is what I try to tell the kids is something I need to do as well. When you're walking in the wrong direction, progress is an about face. And as soon as I realize I get the dad thing wrong, I try to turn it around. I think I've told you before that when I was doing the counseling thing, I would always, especially premarital counseling, I'd encourage couples with the measurement of the health of your relationship is the amount of time that elapses between the moment you know you're wrong and you say you're wrong. If you've got trust with each other and you're just absolutely humbled before each other, you tell each other the truth all the time, that time should be zero. Flip it around. It means you trust the other person to match the reduction in intensity, the laying down of arms, and to accept your acknowledgement of wrongdoing and to make it right and move forward. If that time is a day, a week, a month, you need to come back and see me. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. So that was good. I mean, your turnaround time was awesome. Better than mine often is. In that case, in that one case. Yeah, sure. Well, that's <laughs> one you chose to tell, and I agree with that yeah. decision. All of this to say <laughs> yeah. that the whole reason that I wanted to go a little bit down the rabbit hole here after having the conversations is because I think it is very simple to be like black, white, truth, falsehood. It's that, like, just there, only say things that are true. But when Pontius Pilate says, what is truth? I was thinking truth, about Pilate, what is truth? It's a, it's a better question than he gets credit for from all the people in the Bible who are rooting for Jesus as they read it. Like Pilate, he's asking a valid question. Well, okay, what do we mean? Like truth as we're about to declare it with the law? Because when I make a law, does that just become truth? When I declare a verdict legally, now the verdict is truth. What act, is, are we talking about what actually happened? You're, you're hearing from a guy who's just worn down by the complexity of the question and an attempt on the part of his government, his legal structures to oversimplify the thing. And the reality is that at the most basic level, you're right. Integrity with the kids and letting them see, I would choose the word integrity over the word truth, letting them see that I think banks capital that is going to pay dividends in your ability to speak into invest in their lives forever. But what you described in talking about getting things wrong, so not truth, you misassessed, but with good intentions, that's still integrity. That's still you trying to do what is right, and you just misread it because you're human. And then the way we, you were describing what you do upon realizing that, that's also integrity. You can have no integrity and be saying things that are true. So for me, I would just... I would couch it just a little bit differently. I, I, I think, think so. integrity is what you're going for. Yeah, and one example I can think of off the top of my head is um, an elderly person that is transported via mental illness back to a different time. And, you know, you walk in the room and they say, hey, and they sit, call you by a different name. Um, have you ever dealt with that? I have. Yeah, and so you get it. And so your options are, okay, well, they think we're living in 1982 right now. I can burst the bubble right now and then have all this despair and pain and anguish and stress. And then when they lapse back into this, 10 minutes from now, I can burst the bubble again, or I can just live with this at peace. And that is technically a lie to be like, oh, I'm doing great, you know, even though you just called me, you know, your brother's name or whatever. But every time you burst that bubble, you're making them relive all the memories of both the Trump and Biden presidencies. <laughs> all <laughs> over again you monster just let it slide you know what i'm trying to say i do know what you're yeah, trying to yeah. say so it's it's an i think it's interesting yeah yeah so what do you think about this whole thing i'm doing with the kids uh obviously i'm assuming this episode will end it you know? uh, yeah I, I think it will well i would praise you and your family on a couple of levels not that that's why you asked me to listen in Number one, it's just clear you guys really like each other and you have an awesome thing going as a it's family. It's so fun, man. That's that's part of the reason family's awesome is you just you get these things that happen, these little how do you even script it? Just it just organically, spontaneously happens as a product of being in such close proximity and over such a long period of time and seeing each other grow and change. It's just irreplaceable. It's so special and precious. And this is an example of you leaning into it. And it's beautiful and awesome. Second respectfully, I would suggest you are asking the wrong question 
when it comes to is it true or is it not? I want to throw this out. It's bold. Okay. And okay. you don't have to accept it, but maybe think about it. I think integrity might be the word you're looking for. Okay. And if the question is, is this being handled with truth? No. <laughs> like even technical truth with you withholding it, you're, it's a technicality. But if the question is integrity, I think everybody's handling the thing with integrity. <laughs> like they're not, they're not harming their kid's sister. She's a part of it. Yes, they are obviously making up lies of no harm and they would stop immediately if it was hurting her. And you, by what you have participated in and withheld and the clever ways you've wiggled between the solemn posts of this particular little myth that has been created, it's been technically true, but more so it's it's been filled with integrity. And so there's this whole aspect of life that we get to enjoy if we allow a little bit of give and take with each other on telling white lies, fibs, goofing, shtick together, but never violating integrity. And I think you've all honored the principle of integrity while having fun with the story because all stories involve make-believe and goofing in this way. I, I think you're all handling it beautifully and I think it's really cool and I think integrity is what you value and truth is a component of that. It's really fun. I, I, I've, okay. We've had a lot of fun with it. Booyah. <laughs> all right, I'm good with that. The legend of Harold Wilberforce Sandlin. I think we kind of killed him here, didn't we? He's done for. Yeah, he's dead. He'll be missed. <laughs> We sing Tina a song at the end of when we record. Who's <clears throat> Tina? Tina, you've met her once before. Tina helps us edit the podcast. So what song would you like to sing, Tina? Can I sing a Christmas song? Yes, do it. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingles all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a white horse up and sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun is... Um, it is to throw um, um, a snowball at your face. What? <laughs> what? I didn't know that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs>